Hi, I'm Michaela Pauchner, Managing Editor at No-Till Farmer. I'm here at the first ever commercial no-tillage farming plot right here, Christian County, near Herndon, Kentucky. Welcome to Conservation Ag Update. Conservation Ag Update is brought to you by Martin Till. Hey, welcome to another edition of Conservation Ag Update. Busy spring rolls on with 49% of corn planted according to the most recent USDA crop progress report. Now that's 5% behind the five-year national average. And as WAD news reporter Darren Mullen shows us, some no-tillers like Dave Brown in central Illinois are still patiently waiting for Mother Nature to cooperate. I take a small seed and I grow it into bushels it's all I've ever really known. David Brown's Central Illinois roots run deep. We've tilled some of the same soil since 1867. But his crops are still waiting to take root as he waits for better weather. We need a good hard week to get things done in ideal conditions. We're starting to look at the calendar and say it's showtime. Constant rounds of showers have left farmers stopping and starting this planting season as they wait for their fields to dry out. And when the water recedes and the mud returns to soil, work kicks into overdrive. The Illinois farmer can probably plant upwards of 10% a day of their crop. That can even be pushed more if you've worked longer hours, and that's probably what we'll be doing. The good news is Brown and other farmers aren't in danger of losing too much of their yields if they get the seeds in the ground this week. But his yield can still start to drop if the forecast doesn't give him a window for the hundreds, if not thousands of acres that remain. The forecast I'm looking for is a period of dry weather. We'll keep planting until we think we, it's, we're wasting our time. But Brown has endured the test of time before. Otherwise, he wouldn't still be here, growing his family's roots in the region he loves so much. It means a lot to, to me, to my family, that we have history and that we have continuity. Thanks to our good friend Darren there for that report. Now, Dave Brown does some minimum tillage on corn, but he no-tills almost all his soybeans, which puts him in a better spot moisture-wise than many of his conventional counterparts. And it's a similar story in southeastern Wisconsin, where longtime no-tiller Tyler Troyola just got almost two inches of rain in one day, throwing a tractor glitch, and it's been a pretty challenging spring so far. But thanks to no-till, Tyler's fields aren't completely covered in puddles right now. We've had field days before where they come out and do water infiltration tests, and there's a, you just go across the fence line, and it's a giant difference. Um, we've already had an inch and a half of rain today, and you drive around, and there's not a lot of puddles. I mean, there's some, but it definitely makes a difference. So there are certain parts of the state that are a little behind, but we had a couple of breakdowns early in season that slowed us down. We upgraded our corn planter this year, and then it turns out our tractor didn't have enough that had a hidden glitch in it that we just found from updating the planner. So that cost us three or four days. We got that fixed, so we're doing okay. It just needs to dry out a little bit. Yeah, and the corn planter wasn't his only upgrade. Tyler's also trying John Deere Sea and Spray Premium for the first time. We'll check back in with him in June to see how it goes. Well, I'll tell you one guy who'd love to get some of this rain we've been talking about, Robert Boyle. He only gets about seven inches of rain in Coolidge, Arizona, but that's not stopping him from using cover crops and strip till. Robert, what's going on? I'll be talking this year at the strip till conference, talking a little bit about strip tilling and adverse conditions reducing passes, uh, saving water. This field of corn's a month old. It'll be irrigated with a new Rain 360 unit where we're gonna start implementing banded water instead of full irrigation. Just looking at multiple ways in order to improve the bottom line and cut out um, any extra passes through the field, making us more efficient. Really looking forward to seeing Robert at the National Strip Tillage Conference, August 8th and 9th in Madison, Wisconsin. Head to striptillconference.com to reserve your spot and cash in on those early bird registration savings. Time now for the Cover Crop Connection. McCain Vogel, take it away. Thanks, Noah. This week, we're going to hear from USDA research agronomist Jose Franco as he discusses alternatives to only using cereal rye as a winter cover crop in the upper Midwest. Some of these alternatives include triticale, hairy vetch, and winter camelina. Here's what Franco and his team of researchers are looking for with those trials. We're interested in a few different things, right? So we want to we want to diversify so that we can potentially reduce any negative impact on the next corn crop. So we're working in a corn silage system, so our corn on corn rotation. 
So we're planting these cover crops uh, after corn silage harvest. We're applying, applying dairy manure. And then the next year we're harvesting them for forage and then planting another corn crop to see the response of that corn crop. Um, so we wanna see if diversifying them and reducing that proportion of cereal rye has any uh, potential benefit to the next corn crop. Uh, we're looking at the pollinators with winter camelina, and we're looking at the nutrient uptake with these different cover crop species and mixtures. So we're looking at soil nitrates as a, as a, um, in a direct me indirect measurement of um, water quality. Um, and then when rye hits the boot stage, we're harvesting all of these cover crops for forage. So we'll look at um, productivity. So look at forage yields, as well as do uh, run a series of nutritive value forage quality metrics on them. And you can head to covercropstrategies.com to learn more about these alternative cover crops that Franco and his team are studying. That's all for this week. Until next time, back to you, Noah. Thank you very much, McCain. Continuing the wet spring theme now from earlier in the show, veteran agronomist Ken Ferry checks in from rain-soaked Illinois, where no-till is once again proving its worth on a field that received five inches of rain in less than four days. I've seen in many cases where a good no-till program literally eliminates the need for waterways, terraces, and some of the stuff that we had to use when we we're using such massive amounts of tillage. Now that doesn't mean every field can be fixed with no-till, but it is something where uh, we see it and we see it a lot. If you still have slope and you're still fighting erosion in the no-till, yeah, you're going to have to bring in those waterways. You're going to have to think about maybe terraces, grass back terraces, or cover crops or combination of the above. It's pretty amazing how many of the fields here in Illinois, we can almost fix the erosion issue by just moving them into a longer term no-till program. Moving on now, federal incentives to lower greenhouse gas emissions could result in a windfall for no-tillers who are already raising low-carbon corn for ethanol. Sustainable aviation fuel, referred to as SAF, is eligible for a tax credit under Section 40B, and an update to guidelines for the tax credit requires farmers to use no-till, cover crops, and efficient nitrogen fertilizer for the corn being turned into ethanol in order for the fuel to qualify for a tax credit. Washington, Iowa no-tiller and Continuum Ag founder Mitchell Hora recently explained some of the tax credit math in a webinar. Take a listen. And I believe that for 20, you know, 60 cents a bushel split up amongst all the different players, I just don't know that the juice is going to be worth the squeeze. That's though utilizing this bundle approach of bundling cover crop no-till and enhancing efficiency fertilizer and only allocating 10 CI points. In reality, with the GREET model, doing those practices for most counties would lower your CI score by closer to 30 points, which is like what it's done on my farm. We're 33 points lower than the county default. So say that instead of giving 10 points, it's 30 points. We triple these numbers. Now I think we can make some, some headway and get more farmers to participate, get more farmers brought um, into this soil health space. Much more detailed information about the tax credit on notillfarmer.com. And let's put a bow on the show, or should I say rainbow, with our photo of the week. Check it out. An ETS soil warrior strip till machine looking more like a pot of gold at the end of a rainbow. The Peterson family snapped this award-worthy photo on their farm in southeastern Minnesota. Hang it in the Louvre. Got a photo you'd like to see on the program? Shoot me an email at nnewman at lessermedia.com. Thanks so much for tuning in. Our next episode of Conservation Ag Update airs June 7th. We'll see you then. Have a great day.